Hello, my name is Josh. I'm a PhD student at uh, University of Michigan, and I'm going to be talking about our paper, The Dynamics of Not Unfollowing Misinformation Spreaders. And I worked on this with my advisors, Eric Gilbert and Jaron Budak. So the motivation for this is that there's a lot of work on misinformation exposure, but comparatively, very little is known about misinformation unfollowing. And even some of the most fundamental empirical questions here are virtually completely unknown. So for example, do people unfollow misinformation spreaders? And what, if anything, predicts doing so? And so to that end, we conducted the first large-scale study of the frequency and predictors of unfollowing mis misinformation spreaders on social media. And understanding these things is important. So regarding frequency, if unfollowing is relatively rare, then this would suggest that stopping exposure from arising in the first place is crucial. Um, but conversely, if users are already going to unfollow misinformation spreaders anyway, this could reduce the content moderation burden. And regarding predictors, um, understanding predictors of unfollowing can inform interventions to further increase unfollowing. So here's our basic research design, and I'm going to elaborate on this later. But we identified about 5,000 users who shared health misinformation flagged by PolitiFact on Twitter. And then at two time points, six months apart, we pulled all the followers of these misinformation spreaders, and then we could model the frequency and predictors of a follower spreader edge that existed in time one um, being dissolved by time two. So our study draws on two buckets of uh, related work, one misinformation exposure and the other unfollowing on social media. And regarding misinformation exposure, there's obviously no uniform pathway, but we could broadly think about factors at an individual or environmental level. And for the sake of time, I'm just going to briefly talk about a few of these. Um, so there's some evidence that misinformation exposure is driven by selective exposure. That is to say, people are intentionally seeking this information out. And one data point for this, for example, is that people consume more unreliable news than what search engines recommend. And this selective exposure is ideologically driven. So for instance, for both Trump and Clinton supporters, users were more likely to visit untrustworthy websites consistent with their ideology. And in general, conservatives and people with more extreme ideologies consume more fake news. But misinformation exposure can also arise more incidentally through environmental factors. So one of these is default settings. So in a somewhat different domain, researchers found that most online news consumption was driven by defaults, users visiting their home page. And by analogy here, we could say that the content from the people that a user follows can be thought of as the default content that the user sees. And so even if the initial choosing of these defaults is an individual level intentional decision, this could create a content environment that may subsequently more incidentally expose users to misinformation. Regarding unfollowing on social media very quickly, um, users are less likely to unfollow reciprocal ties, redundancy in the form of burst tweeting or posting similar content to other people you follow predicts unfollowing, and there's some evidence for ideological differences here. So for example, in one study, uh, liberals were more likely to report political unfriending. So, Based on the literature, we had specific hypotheses around two key variables. One of them is initial exposure, and the other is ideology. So by initial exposure, what I mean is the number of misinformation spreaders that a follower followed at the time of the first data poll. And for ideology, we use a measure developed by Pablo Barbera. So basically, this assigns a political ideology score to a Twitter user based on the accounts that this user follows. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to be talking about the hypotheses regarding ideology. I'll just talk about those involving initial exposure, but the paper has a um, more theoretical motivation for the ideology ones. So essentially, it's not obvious if high initial exposure would be associated with higher or lower unfollowing at time two. And we call these competing hypotheses the reversion hypothesis and the inertia hypothesis. So here's how the reversion story could go. Redundancy is a predictor of unfollowing. More misinformation ties means more redundancy. And also, if misinformation exposure is more incidental than intentional, we could also see a regression to the mean effect. And so the reversion hypothesis says exposure to misinformation is actually self-correcting. That is to say, high initial exposure will be associated with um, higher subsequent unfollowing at T2. And then by contrast, we have the inertia hypothesis. So um, you know, higher exposure to misinformation may proxy stronger belief in misinformation if that exposure is intentional. And higher exposure may cause more belief in misinformation as well. And so the inertia hypothesis would predict the opposite. It would say that actually misinformation exposure is self-reinforcing. That is to say, um, high T1 exposure will be associated with uh, lower unfollowing subsequently. So here's what we did. We collected health misinformation URLs and tweets flagged by PolitiFact. Then we found users who shared this content on Twitter. And we denoted these users misinformation spreaders. And we also polled the followers of these spreaders. And then we answered three research questions across two studies. So in study one, we looked at rates. What is the frequency of unfollowing misinformation spreaders? 
and are these people unfollowed at a higher or lower rate than non-misinformation spreaders? And then in the second study, we looked at predictors. So what are the predictors of unfollowing a misinformation spreader? So I'm going to briefly talk about the people in our sample. Um, so in general, most followers of these spreaders were conservative. There was a very high reciprocity rate. So what this means is that a lot of misinformation spreaders were following back the, the followers. And uh, initial exposure was right skewed. Conservatives had higher exposure. And we also found that the most exposed followers were more likely to be ideologically extreme conservatives, which is very much in line with all the selective exposure literature I talked about at the start. So in study one, we're looking at rates again. What is the frequency of unfollowing misinformation spreaders, and are they unfollowed at a different rate? And to do this, we selected a subset of 2,500 misinformation followers to act as a panel, basically. And then at two time points, we pulled all the friends of these followers, so we could see who they unfollowed from time one to time two. And then we could look at whether uh, the unfollowing rates of spreaders differed from non-spreaders. And our first finding is this. Only 0.5% of misinformation ties were severed per month. Now, 0.5% is a very small number in absolute terms. This is also a relatively low number if we compare this to um, other studies on Twitter unfollowing. Our second finding was that users were actually 31% more likely to unfollow non-misinformation spreaders than misinformation spreaders. Now, in study two, we looked at the other side, the predictors. So what are the predictors of unfollowing a misinformation spreader? And to do this, we pulled the followers of spreaders identified in the previous section um, in both March 2023 and October 2023. And data was at this edge level, so a follower following a spreader. And we predicted if an edge that existed in T1 would not exist in uh, T2. And in addition to control variables, we had two main variables of interest, which map onto the specific hypotheses I talked about earlier. Um, so one variable, again, initial exposure, number of misinformation spreaders that somebody followed at the start. And the other is political ideology. And we operationalize ideology in two ways. So first, we have an indicator variable for whether a follower is liberal or conservative. And we also take the um, absolute value of this measure. And we use that as a measure of ideological strength. And then we look at interactions between these as well. Our main model was a logistic regression with cluster robust standard errors. And this gave near identical results to a Bayesian multi-level logistic regression. So for the next few slides, I'm going to be talking about um, the average marginal effects on the probability of unfollowing a misinformation spreader. So the x-axis is how the coefficient affects the probability of unfollowing. Because these are average marginal effects, these are taking into account interactions, which I'll then discuss subsequently. So we first find that reciprocity is by far the biggest predictor. So reciprocal ties are very rarely um, severed here. And likely because many of these ties were reciprocal, we have this low overall unfollowing rate of misinformation spreaders. We also find that initial exposure and the spreader tweeting often predicted on following. And so this is more consistent with this reversion hypothesis than inertia hypothesis. And turning to ideology, we find that liberals were more likely to unfollow. And although there was no overall effect of ideological strength, this actually masked partisan differences. So we found that extreme liberals unfollowed more than moderate um, liberals and extreme conservatives unfollowed less than moderate conservatives. And we also found that this reversion hypothesis was true separately for liberals and conservatives, but it was about 1.7 times as strong for liberals. So just to wrap up, I started this talk by saying that there's a lot of prior work on misinformation exposure, and virtually nothing is known about misinformation unfollowing. So we looked at the frequency and predictors of unfollowing misinformation spreaders on social media. Regarding frequency, we find that misinformation ties are rarely severed, just 0.5% per month. And these misinformation spreaders are actually unfollowed less than non-misinformation spreaders. The implication here is once exposed to misinformation spreaders, people actually rarely unfollow. But some things did predict unfollowing, so we found reciprocity had a very large downward effect on unfollowing. And one implication here is that interventions to further increase unfollowing might want to um, uh, focus on these non-reciprocal edges. We also found that higher initial exposure predicted higher subsequent unfollowing, so it's more consistent with this reversion account. But future work could disambiguate the exact mechanism, so is this due to redundancy or regression to the mean. And finally, we found partisan asymmetries. So we found that overall, um, liberals are more likely to unfollow. And at higher levels of ideological strength, this gap widened even further. And this is an interesting finding because prior work shows conservatives are more likely to consume misinformation. And our study is showing that they're also uh, less likely to unfollow misinformation spreaders. And so combining these findings would suggest that misinformation exposure among conservatives is very likely to persist at a high level. Overall, because misinformation unfollowing is rare, it is important to stop exposure in the first place.
And here's a summary of our main findings with the link to the paper on the top right. Thank you for listening, and uh, thank you to our funders, the Social Science Research Council and the NSF.